Hello there and welcome back to Surviving Bedrock. So, as you can see, I'm no longer in iron gear. We've um, got some iron, which means I've been able to level up, level up a lot of my villagers now, which means I now have some shiny diamond gear. Um, and as you can see, we do have a little bit of a glint to us. So it's not completely enchanted, but we've got unbreaking on it. I've got feather falling, stops me from taking damage when I jump off things, because I tend to jump off things. We got unbreaking across the board and we still got the respiration on our helmet so we didn't die and we're drowning as well. Most of the time it's just me protecting myself from myself at this precise moment in time. So yep, we have my gear. We are gonna go now and try and get the rest of it all um, enchanted. That means that I need to go upstairs to my tree farm and uh, what? Why is there snow in my butt? Okay, it looks like the pranks are progressing. We no now have snow golems in my base, which are going to be doing their own kind of decoration, I suppose. Okay, well, I suppose that's one thing. We also have cake by the looks of things. Saves me on food, I suppose. So snow golems and cake, okay. But no, what we are going to do today, we are going to go and head upstairs. We are going to chop down a load of trees, um, which I can then sell alongside the iron for emeralds, which is going to allow me to fully enchant my gear. And I'm going to need cookie. Um, I'm going to need fully enchanted gear because today we are going to go and do a more cookie. And more cook, more cake. Anybody else here getting a Hansel and Gretel vibe? Am I being lured into a witch's house or something? Am I going to end up stuffed in a furnace somewhere? Um. Anywho, I'm getting distracted. More cookies. Any more? No, we just seem... Okay. So, yeah. We're going to chop down all of these trees. We are going to sell these for emeralds. We are then going to use the emeralds to enchant my gear. Once I've got a proper set of enchanted gear, what we're going to do, we are going to go into the nether. I need to start um, moving on from my base setup. My base is pretty much there at the moment as far as the basics are concerned. We've got storage. We've got food. We've got gear. We've got enchantments. I now need all the rest of the stuff to build my later builds. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is build myself a big bamboo farm. That's going to give me unlimited wood without having to chop down all of these trees. For that to work, there's a few things I'm going to need. We need gold um, for golden, for rails. I'm going to need redstone. Well, redstone I'm going to just have to mine for, unfortunately. But we'll do some mining in a later date. And we're also going to need potions. The reason I need potions is because I need slime for the flying machine. And the best way of getting slime at this precise moment in time is with the new sliming potions that have come out. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get myself up to a decent level where I'm not going to die horrendously any second in the nether. And then we're going to go and we're going to go and try and find ourselves a nether fortress. We might, if we're lucky, try and find ourselves um, some wither skeleton skulls so that in a upcoming episode we can start punching a wither so that i can then get myself a beacon to make my mining jobs easier so you're probably not going to watch want to watch me chop down all of these trees uh, no i wouldn't want to watch someone chop down trees so i shall be back in a bit hopefully with lots of wood so i can get lots of emeralds so i can get lots of enchanted gear see you soon all right then so we have cleared out my farm um we pulled all of these guys down. We have then replanted the entire farm. Um, so we're just going to have to wait for this lot to grow back up. As you can see, we've got stuff starting to grow already. Um, but we didn't do too badly. I mean, when we've uh, cleared this out, we've got what, roughly around about 20 stacks of wood. Just a bit short of by the looks of things with the odd stacks here and there. But that will give us more than enough to run through my uh, Fletchers quite quickly and easily now to give us what, a couple of stacks of emeralds which will allow me to uh, buy myself some enchants it should give me enough experience to get it all enchanted although i'm also gonna have to repair my stuff as well 
So that's the plan moving forward. We shall get some more gear enchanted and I shall see you in a bit. Oh, so here we are. We have fully enchanted all of my gear. Well, not fully enchanted. That is a complete lie. But I have everything that I want for my trip to the nether. So we've got protection and unbreaking on all of this. I'm not going to put mending on it just yet. It will have mending on it. But whilst I'm trying to get stuff enchanted, if I've got mending on my gear, when I'm trading, I'm losing experience to the gear. So I've decided to leave that off for the time being because otherwise I'm just now going to forget to take it off when I start doing trading. So I'm just going to leave it all on. Um, I have a bow with unbreaking power, punch and mending. Um, the only thing that I'm going to be putting on that is flame. But flame you don't need in the never because everything's immune to fire damage. So it doesn't really make much difference. Well, not everything. The majority of things um again with my sword we've got looting we've got sharpness we've got unbreaking we've got knockback again we don't have fire aspect but don't need that at this precise moment in time in theory if i'm going to another fortress you should probably go for smite but i don't have a smite villager and i'm not going to bother rolling one i will actually probably have to roll one at some point if i'm going to start punching withers in the face but I'm not at the moment, so I'll leave it for the time being. Uh, we've got my axe again. All of my um, tools have got unbreaking and mending on them, so I can repair them up afterwards. So we are pretty much there. Um, all good to go. So what we're going to do, we've got some blocks. We have some torches. I may try and find myself a slightly better golden helmet to stop the pigs from killing me. Um, and then we've got a stack of golden carrots. So... We are pretty much good to go. Um, we're going to go and have a trip in the Never, and I shall see you on the other side when we go and try and find ourselves a, a Never Fortress, but be another couple of little bits and bobs that we are going to need um, moving forward. All right, then. So here we are in my little Never Portal area in the Never. We are right in the middle of the Nether because zero, 00 is basically in the middle of this lake. As my area on the server i'm jumping in here so i don't get shot is negative x we are gonna have to go and go this way so what i'm gonna do is rather than dig through this because i'm quite low there's a little shelf above me just here so i'm gonna create a staircase going up so i can get onto this plateau and get away from this lava lake so that's my first job we shall see you in a bit, hopefully, when I've got a little bit more room and we can go and explore and see if we can't find ourselves a fortress. All right, so we've got a little, so look, ourselves a little bit of a staircase coming up here. Now it's somewhat protected, so I'm not going to get shot by gas a lot and stuff like that. We are in a soul sand biome, so there are lots of skeletons around here. We've also got gas spawning all over the shop. We have a bit of a basalt delta over here. Now, what I am going to do, a um, great way when you're in the never of making certain that you don't get too lost. Now, it's not going to be too big of a problem because I'm coming back to zero. Zero, basically, is just to create yourself some pillars. Um, you don't have to go quite as OTT as I just have done there. But somewhere where you can always find your way back. Stick a pillar up. Oh, hello. Uh, let's clear a lot of this soul fire out so I can see but that's not a bad option um so yeah um i've been quite fortunate here look at this we have another fortress in the distance um and not even a great distance so um right 
Let's have a look and see. We're going to have to go across some lava one way or t'other here. Um, ghast in the distance should be fine. If I hear a scream, then we'll run. But we've got... Lots of lava over there. I think we are going to try and head over this way. Maybe bridge across over here. That seems like that's going to be the best way rather than going across lava and across lava and across lava some more. So I'm going to try and get over there. We'll get somewhere decent over here so I can get some. Oh, and we've got a load of fossils as well, which is bone blocks, which is great because I don't have a good supply of bone mill just yet. So we'll pick up these bone blocks on the way. We will make our way a safe-ish route over to this fortress and we'll go and see if this fortress has been explored or whether this is an open fortress to use so uh see you in a bit <clears throat> all right then so what we have gone and done um i dug around this ledge over here um just digging into the wall following it all the way round. Um, as you can see, because there's lava literally all the way around this, um, just to make my life easier if I'm going backwards and forwards, which I think I probably will be a few times. Stuff like um, blaze rods, incredibly handy to have. Um, so um, I will be coming backwards and forwards this way. So we've just put a wall around here so that i can traverse this without worrying about gas blowing up holes in the floor patches of this are quite thin so there is a chance that if a gas does hit me i would fall into the lava lake below me so we've just put this wall across so i can't be spotted by gas this comes all the way round to this little plateau and on this little plateau we've not bothered with the wall there's this isn't anywhere near as thin there's no real danger of a gas blowing a hole in the floor yes i might have to dodge the odd fireball and stuff like that but that's about as bad as it's gonna get coming around here so i didn't actually worry let's talking of ghasts um and then what we've done is we've got ourselves to our never fortress um, now the never fortress is a little bit higher than the floor around us so all we've done is we've created a little cobble staircase uh, because it's cobble gas can't blow it up so i'm not worried too much about the rail side of things here and then we've created ourselves a little safe space at the top where I can hide primarily from wither skeletons. Because um, if you get withered, then that can, you know, with the amount of mobs that you get in this place, getting withered and having um, blazes ping you with fireballs whilst your health slowly whittling down due to the wither effect is never a fun thing so now what we're going to do is we're just going to work our way in here and what i generally tend to do is the cheating method whoop there we go we got withered already and we'll just run away for a second try not to die to this which we shouldn't do Kill Mr. Skelly Barb. Let's see if I can't get my cheaty bar put up. There we go. That stops him from coming in this way. And what I would do is at each of these junctions when you are exploring, especially these ones where it's quite simple, just put up a run of bars that are only two blocks high. So you have no issues running through it. Um, but with a skeleton's don't have the ability to get through these gaps so you can literally run back in here without any issues whatsoever and the wither skeletons are going to have to stop and then you can just walk up and twat them in the face so i'm going to walk through here try and find there's two things that i'm really looking for in here number one is never wart i need to be making potions uh, and number two is um 
Wither skeletons. No, it's not. It's blaze rods. There's three things I'm looking for in here. I'm an idiot. Wither skeleton skulls is one. Blaze rods is two. Um, and nether wart is three. Those are the three things that I really want. Um, I need three skulls. I may not get them today. Um, with a skelly skulls are one of the hardest drops in the game to actually get so you do have to grind in with a loot and three sword for quite a while to get any um, but we're going to explore through here we're going to try and see if we can find a blaze spawner that we can maybe uh, hack away at for a bit and also um, we're going to look for um, a nether warp patch because I really want those uh, potions to start getting a slime farm up and running so uh, when I find bits that I need, I shall come back and we shall go from there. See you in a bit, guys. All right, so we have, as I come down here, a spawner. We also have a chest. Uh, give me a second. Let us do a cheaty bar there so I don't get surprised that way. We'll stick another one there just in case. We'll also stick one behind me. And we'll get the whole hog, we'll create ourselves another little safe space here. Can't get surprised by Weaver Skellies now. Let's have a quick look. I should have bought more. A gold bar. An ingot, should I say? Yeah, actually, whilst we're here, what don't we need? Uh, don't need a gold sword. Everything else is really. We don't need a brick or oh, the sand. I'll keep that. Right, so we have. Christ, a maze. Didn't really stood there for that long. So we have ourselves a spawner. What we will do? Give me some light. Chitty bar. Chitty bar. Right, so, what have we got blaze rods wise? We don't need a huge amount of blaze rods. To be fair, actually, I think I've pretty much got everything that I need, but. We will definitely remember that this spawner is here. Um, I could probably do with a few more blazes. It's sort of. No, actually, that's everything that I'm going to need to begin with. So, and I'm probably going to get more blazes as I go through. Unfortunately, what I don't seem to have is any nether wart so far, and this is a dead end. Okay, so I'm going to continue hunting for some nether wart. We've got our blaze spawner that we've found, the first of possibly a few in the actual forge. Uh, ay, 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 ay. Run around the corner, get gassed. What do you got there? Oh, more blows. So, yeah. I'm probably, I should not really be doing this in RTX because you don't know if there's a hole around here that you're going to run into. I'm going to have a hunt around for some more... Um, see if I can find myself some Neverack. Neverack? Nether Wart. I'll be able to talk at some point today. I'm hoping, because they're normally in the larger build, so there wasn't any down there, but... These are the larger buildings that I'm looking for for nether wart. So hopefully as we move forward, we shall see some in here. So I'm just going to go and have a quick hunt around, see if we can find some nether wart. And hopefully I'll be back in a moment having succeeded. So we have worked our way round to the very back of this nether fortress. As you can see, we are right at the far end of the fortress. Oh, we got another skeleton. Dead. Um, so we've gone all the way down this corridor, all the way down here, and it's not the the world. It's 
not the largest Nether Fortress you've ever seen. But at the same time, um, this is actually a really, really good fortress when it comes to possibly building a fortress farm later on in the game. Because it's all over lava and there is nothing around it. If I can get a decent view without dying, as you can see, to this side, there is a massive amount of open space all the way around there which is all lava based i can't see anything so there's a really good chance that you could build out a uh, platform over the middle of that lava lake and get a really easy really decent fortress farm right this was our primary reason for coming here i do need to torch this doing fortresses in rtx is certainly interesting and it makes what is already a fun experience even more so right so this is what we the only reason we came here for never what this is going to allow me to start making some potions um and with the new potions that have been released over the last couple of versions this means that we can have some fun and get ourselves um, a really simple slime farm up and running all right so we are back at the entrance to the never fortress we have all of my um let's have a look see what we got we got some never what we got some blaze rods uh, didn't get any skulls but i don't think i'm going to be fighting the never and the wither anytime soon um so we'll have to wait for the beacon i suppose now i did say that there was some other bits that i wanted to grab whilst we were in the nether and the reason for that is i want to go over to a warped biome and we have one just over here and it looks like there's a way round to it that way. So that's my next. Oh, actually, I wonder. Let's just go. Go on. Miss me. Bye bye. Let's see if we can get any skulls from these guys while we've got a big group of them. Come on. This way. No, coal. Coal. Oh, I think we just got a skull. Stop shooting me. We get our first skull. We did. We have our first skull. Um, ooh, do I stick around and try and hunt some more skulls as I've just got one? No, no, no. We'll keep the skull. We'll try and get some more at a later date. But over here, we have a warped biome, and that is where I want to go for my next little batch of items. So. I shall see you over there shortly and I'll explain what I'm doing over there once we get there. So here we are. Um, you don't need a massive amount of space in a warped biome to do this. Um, but this is by far the easiest way I have found to get yourself um, ender poles. Literally, all you do is you find yourself a warped biome. Um, if you've got a little bit of line of sight, it makes life a bit easier for you. But even this little corner here will work. And you just build yourself a too tall platform surrounding a tree. And then you just stare at Enderman. Um, <laughs> punch an Enderman. It's just going to come to you. And if you've got a looting sword, you'll get yourself some ender pearls. So we stare at this guy. Over he comes. Thank you very much. Um, with Enderman, it is actually better that you don't have flame on your sword. Because then they don't 
disappear quite as far because they're not constantly getting pain. But you can quite quickly and easily amass a rather large amount of ender poles. You haven't got to go around and chase them. They can't hurt you. And so it's just a really quick, simple way to uh, stare at you. Come out! Of grabbing yourself a huge number of ender poles very quickly. Without any danger. Without worrying about any damage. Oh, come here. There we go. Right. Thank you. And another one. And that way round. I mean, what? We've been here for four minutes. We've got seven poles. So, yeah. This way round, you can just grab as many ender poles as you need. Um, and, obviously, ender poles are great. means you can build yourself ender chests. Going to work on that when used with... Um, your blaze powders that you get from blaze rods all of a sudden you've got eyes of end up for getting to the um the end primarily what i'm going to be using mine for is so i can get to the end because that means that i can go and get myself an elytra and some shulkers which is the next thing that i'm going to be desperately needing because whilst i'm working in my base at this precise moment in time so going backwards and forwards to get blocks isn't a massive issue um having to travel to take those blocks any distance if you want to build any further away can become a real problem so yeah i'm just gonna stand here for a little bit and hunt some endermen get myself a stack or so of eyes out of poles um so i've got enough to get myself a couple of ender chests and enough eyes that i can then get myself to the end so uh, i'm gonna be here for a little while once i'm done i shall come back and what we'll probably do once that that's the last of the bits of stuff that i actually needed so once we're done with this i shall be heading back to the overworld and i shall see you there okay so we are back from our never trip we have got back safe and sound no deaths didn't even really come close if I'm being brutally honest, do you? And we have a chest full of goodies. So we've got some soul soil and some soul sand. Obviously, you're going to come back with plenty of neverack. You do always do whenever you go up the never. But that's the stuff that we're not particularly fussed about. This portion down the bottom here is the stuff that we sort of went ideally to find. So we've got some quartz all means we're going to be able to make stuff like observers and stuff like that which i'm going to need we've got some gold which is going to help with powered rails and stuff like that got some bones quite handy because i don't have any way of generating bones at this precise moment in time so i'm just relying on getting some stuff we will get a bone mill farm set up at some point but this is going to give me plenty of uh bone mill uh, which we might even use with this stuff over here. So we've got some Crimson Nylium and some Warp Nylium and then some Fungus to go with it. What this means is I can now farm Crimson and Warped Wood in the overworld, um, which, okay, I can warp farm any wood, but this stuff, obviously for building, is really, really, really handy. Um, gives you some op other colour options that you wouldn't normally have access to. Nether Wart, one of the primary reasons that I went there in the first place. Uh, this is going to allow me to make potions um, and we'll be able to go through and use those potions in various different farms. So that's what we're going to explore probably next time round. Um, so we're going to build ourselves a little Neverwalt farm and then we'll go from there. And then Ender Poles and Blaze Rods. This is going to allow me to get to the end and get my um, Shulkers. Um, and my wings so that we can travel around a little bit easier and not die from falling down and everything else. Uh, we do manage just the one with a skeleton skull. Um, we will be going back for more. But as I said, don't think I'm going to be fighting the weather anytime soon. So, owl fire. Am I going to find cookies around my base on a regular basis? Because there's another cookie there, and there's another cookie over here. I'm going to have to hunt and try and track down all of these random cookies, because someone, someone's been hiding cookies around my base. Um, but thank you where it is for the cookies. We like cookies. Um, but no, thank you for watching. We'll be back next time um, with, as I say, 
probably next time around we're looking at potions and we're looking at uh, modern slime farms, which are all fun and exciting. So uh, thanks for watching and see you soon.